Welcome to the Simply Vegan podcast, brought to you by the team at Vegan Food and Living, the UK's best-selling vegan magazine. Today's episode is sponsored by White Rabbit, the makers of delicious Italian food that everyone can enjoy. They've just launched their brand new range of frozen vegan margarita, sizzling jackfruit and garlicky mushroom pizzas that are 100% plant-based, gluten-free and delicious. They're available in Sainsbury's and co-op stores. For more info and exact stores, head to their Instagram, white underscore rabbit underscore pizza underscore co. Welcome to part two of our Veganuary specials. Hope you're all getting on okay, new vegans and uh, any older listeners, or not older in age, but older as in... <laughs> Um, regular listeners, I should say. Um, I hope you're enjoying sort of getting back to basics because I think after the excesses of Christmas and especially all those like naughty supermarket options, it's it's going to be quite nice to just get back to the basics of like whole food plant-based cooking, I think, isn't it? And that's what yeah. we're going to focus on today. Molly is back. Hooray! I'm back. Hello. Oh my God. I feel like I've not been on there for ages, but I mean, I haven't, I suppose. Oh, it's just been crazy, hasn't it? We've had Christmas. We've, you know, you, you've had a lot going on. I, I think, know. how's your first week been back at work? Because mine's been pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty intense. I think I've kind of obviously coming back on the Tuesday and then having a day off because of family issues and then coming back. It's just like, Wah. but I'm back. I'm back, Yay. baby. Good. And I feel <laughs> I feel ready to come back. Do you know after Christmas and you're just like, oh my god, it's nice for like the first week, and you're just like, I need structure because I'm becoming a potato. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, why do we do it? We 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 do all these things that are good for us, like in our normal lives, like have routines and, and yeah. do exercise and eat well, and then it's like, yay, Christmas. Let's just do none of that until we feel so horrid that <laughs> we're I desperate know. to go back. Do you know what? I really need to sort of like start in court. It's just about balance, isn't it? And like, I am so bad at balancing things. I'm one or the other. Like, I'm either whole food plant based or I'm whole chocolate, <laughs> everything bad for me based. Junk yeah. food deep, junk food diva. Junk food based. That's what I am. <laughs> yeah. And just carbs, just absolute carbs. It's quite, yeah. So I'm. This Christmas, I know we got ages left, but I'm going to try and like balance. Yeah, yeah. Don't make me think about next Christmas, please. <laughs> I know, <laughs> bloody hell, so good, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, we're going to get back to basics and just kind of share the things that we love to cook and just lots of tips. We've had a few yeah. emails asking for similar things. So um, I hope you'll enjoy these next few episodes. Um, for anyone new... Molly and I are both members of the Vegan Food and Living team um, and we've been vegan for, well, about six years between us, haven't we? You've been vegan about two years, I've yeah. been vegan about four. And every Tuesday, Molly and I get together to have a bit of a, a chat about all things vegan. Yeah. We taste test all the latest products, which we're going to get back to next week. We're just having a little break from eating. <laughs> We, are, we need it. <laughs> um, and then we answer your questions, which you can email to simplyvegan at anthem.co.uk. Um, and it's not only us that answer your questions. We have a team of health professionals, uh, plant-based health professionals, um, who answer, yeah, anything on nutrition or like illnesses, yeah. Um, just yeah, just general health, fitness, whatever, anything relating to veganism, they are there to answer them for you, which is amazing. Like yeah. exclusive access to these like top doctors and nutritionists. I think that's things that me and Holly cannot answer. Things that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can Google it, but you know, <laughs> you can do that too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, well, so let's talk for January. So, I obviously, you weren't here last week, Molly, and it was just me rambling on about like <laughs> going oh. vegan. <laughs> Just this woman screaming into the microphone about veganism. I it love was. It. It's so weird not having anyone to talk to and bounce off. It's like, uh, okay, it's just me. Um, <laughs> but I spoke about the kind of there being like two different ways of doing it when you first go vegan. So 
like swapping like for like so you know now it's just amazing isn't it really that we live in a world where you can just get vegan cheese vegan yeah. mince vegan like chicken like, like, like literally anything prawns you can get vegan prawns I mean what kind of age are we living in this is incredible um and I also spoke on last Thursday to Ellie Busby who was talking about the fact that not all processed products are bad. And, you know, when you are transitioning, you sometimes just have to make it easy for yourself because otherwise it's just too overwhelming, kind of completely changing the way you cook. So don't beat yourself up. If you're using some processed stuff, so what? It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, it's all about balance, isn't it, really? Exactly, yeah. And I think just add, you know, just keep the vegetables in there because it Mm. is important to, um, you know, to, to get your sort of five or 10 a day or, you know, however many veg you can pack in. But obviously the other way of doing things is to just start to learn some techniques um, and some ways of cooking plant-based whole food meals from scratch. So should we have, should we just like go through some of our favorites, Molly? Yeah, let's go. You go first. Okay. (laughs) Do you know what? I've started cooking. So I did it for New Year's Eve. And because I was trying to think of something that was fairly easy, fairly light after Mm. all the eating over Christmas. Yeah. Um, So I did miso soup. And I know this sounds Mm. really boring and like, well, what's so great about that? But I just don't ever really make it. And I never thought the kids would really like it, but they did. So it's literally just um, vegetable stock. Mm Mm-hmm. Few teaspoons of miso, yeah, and then um, chopped up spring onion, some chopped up nori sheets. So they're the seaweed sheets that you get that you make sushi with, yeah. or any seaweed really. Seaweed is so good for you, really packed with nutrients. And if you think about it, when you're eating fish, you're getting the goodness that 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 they're eating, and they're eating this seaweed. So you're cutting out the middle the middle man, the middle fish, the middle guys. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, you didn't have to kill a fish. So it's all good. And what else did I put in there? Oh, silken tofu. Oh, you've got to add a bit of tofu into there. Yeah, but I didn't know about adding silken because it makes it almost like it's hard. I don't know, like my, because my son compared it to egg. It's sort of slippery. It sounds gross, but it is so good. And I made it it again last night and I added some more, sort of stuff to to kind of bulk it out a bit so I added uh, noodles mm-hmm. and um chili and mushrooms and oh. oh pak choy it's just I love miso soup I think as you said you just have to pack it out because sometimes on its own I've had it sort of before if you go to sort of like Japanese restaurants or whatever like it's lovely on its own but when you pack it out, you're just like, oh my gosh, what is this amazing cleansing thing that I'm eating? Yeah, you feel great afterwards, don't you? Because it's just, yeah. And yeah, like you say, pack it out because otherwise it's not going to fill you up. We had it with um, gyozas as well. Oh, you Love make it be hungry. I know. Yeah, it's not good to record at tea time, is it? No. Um, yeah, so that is my, my latest um, sort of meal that I'm probably going to cook way too much and the children will be like, not this again. <laughs> But other other things I like making, curries are just brilliant, yeah. aren't they, on a plant-based diet. Um, I love Fern Cotton's cookbook. She's got like a tomato and coconut dal in there, which is just amazing. I cannot stop eating it when I make it <laughs> with like flatbreads, um, chickpea and spinach, mm. any any veg, just chuck it in and, and add coconut milk and some spices and it just oh my tastes gosh. great. You know what I had for Christmas? The best curry book that I've sort of ever laid my eyes on I think it's called Spice Box oh okay um oh my gosh it's completely plant-based so I've never had like a um a curry recipe book that is just completely plant-based I've always had stuff that I've had to adapt and yeah you know add fake chicken in or fake whatever in yeah um or obviously just have the vegetable options in there but wow this book is just amazing and it's all sort of whole foods um I don't think there's any sort of fake meat in there so it's all the curries are just veg just a celebration of veg and I love it oh my gosh beautiful so I've just been had my head stuck in that and I've just turned into a curry 
<laughs> just your house smell of all the like lovely oh, spices and <laughs> just cardamom and just yeah. so fragrant I love it amazing curries are my go-to yeah and and all those spices are so good for you as well aren't yeah, they definitely They're full of antioxidants so mm-hmm. great to pack in especially this time of year when you need that extra kind of immunity boost yeah um, should we talk about tofu quickly? Because I think if you are new to veganism, tofu is one of those like, oh, I have no idea what to do with that. It can be a bit scary, can't it? I remember when I first went vegan, I don't think I touched tofu for about two and a half months. I've still not touched tempeh. Temper. Still can't say it. I don't know why. <laughs> I think I've I've spoke about this before on the show. I just, for me, I I don't know. I think it's the texture of it that scares me, but I'm just eating with my eyes and I need to grow up and is just this, try it. Is this the tempeh? Yeah, not tofu. Yeah. Tofu's lovely. <laughs> yeah. So tempeh is, um, well, I spoke again, I spoke to Ellie Busby on uh, Thursday and she was saying that tempeh has got twice the protein of tofu. Oh. So I'm going to try and cook with that. And I've got some in the fridge, actually. And again, like you say, it is... It's an acquired, it's not, it doesn't even really taste of anything. I think you just need to know how to use it. Yeah. For any, anyone, again, for any new vegans or new to, to tempeh, it's much firmer than tofu. And you can almost sort of like, you can kind of slice it in strips or you can mm-hmm. like crumble it up. It's good in things like you could add to a bolognese or yeah. tacos um, but you do need to pack in the flavor. So marinate it in perhaps smoked paprika or whatever herbs and spices you want um, to kind of, yeah. So it does taste of something. It's slightly nutty, isn't it? I'd say. Yeah, I think so. That kind of like is what the texture looks like. Um, I did see a lovely recipe on um, the Vegan Food and Living website, actually. And it was for a katsu curry, tempeh katsu curry. Oh, And it looked lovely in there. It looked sort of, it was uh, replacing chicken and yeah it looked stunning in that so I'm maybe I'll give it a go we'll see that'll be my veganuary challenge to try to shall we both do a tempeh challenge this week because I oh. need to use mine up okay all right then you look scared <laughs> I think like, I oh, am. god really I don't I need any I challenges am. it's January <laughs> I've had enough I'm trying to do like no I will do it because I am trying to be whole whole food plant-based at the yeah. moment again so yeah let's do this okay right we'll we'll make a tempeh dish and we will share it with you next week yes but back to tofu so there's two types you can get well there's quite there's there's various types especially now you can get smoked tofu firm extra firm but the main yeah. sort of two um categories that they fall into is silken which is like i suppose it's kind of like a it reminds me of like set custard okay that's a good that's a good comparison so but maybe even a bit looser than set custard yeah it's sort of like maybe like blancmange do you remember that from the 80s (laughs) i wasn't born (laughs) oh god what what year were you born oh 97 (gasps) 97 (laughs) i started uni that year (laughs) how can this be possible (laughs) I'm sorry, Molly. We can't be friends anymore. This is it. It's over. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, I started uni in 97, left in 2000. I was born in 78. I mean, oh, my God. Fine. That's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, there was this thing in the 80s called blamange. Blamange, okay. Um, Yeah, it's kind of wobbly texture. It sounds disgusting. We're really not selling it. But like I said, (laughs) stick it in your miso soup. Amazing. You can also use it for things like... um, I suppose like egg replacement in like flans and quiches. Yeah, custard. Cust- I made um, a key lime pie Ooh. and I used a silken tofu. And also the other day I made um, from this book that I was talking about just another spot. I think it's called the Spice Books. I'll have to remember the name of it. Look it up and we'll put it in the show notes. Yes, we will. Um, and I made a writer using... Um, mm silken tofu and you blend it up i got a new food processor for christmas oh get you show off i know i've got all the gadgets so (laughs) i've blended that up and it just made the nicest writer that i've ever had yeah because usually i'd use like vegan yogurt to do something i know that's what i would normally do so i was shocked oh my god (laughs) see it's every day's a school day even after four years or a couple of years of being vegan 
yeah and what was the other thing oh scrambled tofu so yes. instead of scrambled egg you can make scrambled tofu and I was always using the firm stuff but my daughter once I only had the silken stuff she much prefers that and I suppose it's whether you prefer you know when you used to have scrambled egg you'd have it either some people would have it really dry yeah dry and hard and but also of, really wet it's very strange yeah or you have it really runny I suppose it's which you prefer because mm. the silken obviously makes the more runny <laughs> <laughs> I hate the word runny. Blech. Do you? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's so strange. Strange. <laughs> uh But yeah, so that's silken. And then you get the firm or the extra firm, which mm-hmm. again, you have to press the water out. And you can either do that between some books um, yeah. using like tea towels, or you can get a tofu press. Um, I think it's Tofu Chur, isn't it? That do yeah. amazing. That do them. And I've got one. Um, they're just a bit of a pain to wash out, but they are good. Um, and then... Well, one tip is to put it in the freezer, which is what I did yes. for New Year's Eve. Um, and apparently it just makes it absorb. I think it sort of makes gives it air pockets or something. So when you marinate it, mm-hmm. it absorbs more of the flavor. And again, with tofu, you have don't just expect to cook it up. It's like chicken, isn't it? You're not just going to eat yeah. lumps, lumps of dry chicken. Exactly, exactly. Like even when you were eating sort of meat and stuff, you would season this stuff so it's you know it's exactly the same practice you sort of give it a bit of love and it'll love you back <laughs> that's a good way of putting it what? where am I getting these lines from I don't know <laughs> coming out with it all today I know um yeah so pack it marinate it pack it with flavor and then you can either coat it in corn flour mm-hmm. and then fry it up and then maybe sort of finish it off in the oven, which will make it crispy. Or you could like grill it or just oven bake it. But I really like baked tofu. I've, I've sort of gone into that now. I'd put a little bit of corn flour on there and a um, little bit of oil, put it in the oven for about maybe about half an hour. And it's kind of a bit like popcorn chicken. And sort of I yeah. add that to um, if I'm doing like ramen or sort of like a lot of Asian dishes, I would do that too. Yeah. I think, Delicious. I think it's just remembering that it's it. you do have to cook it differently to meat because with the chicken, you could cook it in a sauce, couldn't you? But if you do that with tofu, you're going to end up with just... Yeah. You've got to add it last minute. If you're doing it sort of like without a coating and stuff, even with a coating, you just wouldn't put it in the sauce but yeah if... put it in at the last minute so it doesn't yeah. go all mushy and I found the same actually with um shop-bought products like vegan meatballs mm-hmm. if I've cooked them before in a sauce like you would meat real meatballs yeah um, they're just turned to mush and there's no texture so I do those in the oven make the sauce and then just plop them in at the last minute yeah definitely it's just about sort of learning and like experimenting and I suppose that's the fun bit about it it's kind of learning and creating these new sort of cooking ways and stuff and I loved it I'm still learning now yeah I find it really exciting I was never a foodie never really that bothered about cooking now I'm putting like spiralizers and (laughs) pots and pans on my Christmas list I've got a mandolin (laughs) (laughs) yeah I did you saying about getting a blender I did get a spiralizer but you know what it got put away and I completely forgot about it till last night and then I went where's my spiralizer I haven't even looked at it so I'm quite excited to experiment with that because I mean all I know all I know about a spiralizer is that you stick some courgette in there and yeah you make a bit of some spaghetti but I'm not about that I would yeah. just just give me pasta There's no... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So do you want to share one of your favorite recipes Molly Yes so this is um one that I'm actually having tonight it's not strictly whole food but it is um very healthy I'd say healthier than sort of regular meat so tonight we're having tonight we are having (laughs) (laughs) um I'm going to do sort of like minted kebabs using um I'm actually using Tesco plant chef burgers um and kind of just molding them into like a kebab patty thing um season it with um cumin mint sort of paprika all of those lovely spices um and then I'm making a a coleslaw 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 can't get the word right coleslaw yeah coleslaw gonna make a coleslaw gonna do a potato salad um a little mint yogurt some pickled onions got some flatbreads going on oh my 
God, I know. Feast. I know. It's not a recipe at all, is it? I just, <laughs> I'm just telling you what I'm having for my dinner. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Well, it's still a meal idea. I mean, yeah. half, the, half the battle for me is thinking of something to eat for dinner. Oh. And it's it's like the whole family it just have no ideas. And I know. I know you can Google it, but, you know, sometimes you just want someone to say, this is what I want for tea, and then I can just go and cook it. So I think sometimes if someone just gives me the idea, then I'm fine. I can Google that. Yeah. And then I'm away and I'll just Google easy vegan, whatever it is. And brilliant. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> if I'm sort of stuck for inspiration, obviously I go on the vegan food and living website. Of course. Amazing uh, recipes on there. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, yeah, I just type in sort of like what I've, I don't know, what I'm feeling on that day. Sort of like easy pasta recipes, easy, easy I don't know, Mexican recipes, whatever. Um, and go through that. and just kind of cook a recipe for the same recipe for about two weeks and then get bored of it <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean there's so many resources out there aren't there I mean yeah. um I've, I was actually reading in bed vegan food and living uh January issue which is the healthy new year so yeah, that, and, actually, and <laughs> I actually sourced recipes for the magazine and I was going oh that's a nice one <laughs> and then I'm like what Sounding surprised. I actually found this <laughs> recipe, but you know, you've got the magazine, you've got the website, you've got um YouTube. I mean, there's yeah. so many um YouTubers, so vegan are brilliant. Um yeah. to watch. Instagram as well. Like Instagram is probably one of my go-tos as well. I kind of recently I've just been finding myself just going through accounts like what I eat in a day and just kind of getting inspiration from that. It's a good idea. Yeah, it's very I don't know, I've just got a lot of time in my hands in the evening and it just sit through all of these boring accounts and not boring obviously <laughs> but probably boring to other people but yeah that's my life now food googling food, food. <laughs> I just love food I um I do love my recipe books as well it's probably because yeah. I'm really old so you're doing Instagram and I'm like oh a nice book <laughs> <laughs> no because I like recipe books as well I do we're gonna um I'm gonna try and get a like a recipe book that you can write your own recipes into oh that's a lovely idea yeah that's what I think I'm going to start doing yeah that's my friend did that and he just had all these like little snippets like he'd just write them out and put them yeah, in yeah I think it's such a lush idea yeah create your own recipe book some of my favorites are um like I said the fern cotton one mm -hmm. I love rebel recipes if you haven't come across Nikki Webster who runs the recipe rebel recipes blog <laughs> and her books you have to check her out oh just such good food from she traveled a lot so it's like influenced by sort of world flavors and yeah. it's all whole food plant-based um and who oh leon have some really good vegan books yes they do i've got their fast vegan which is like a bible it's literally got everything in there from you know breakfast stuff to snacks to everything yeah um and oh, I'm trying to think what other ones Bosch. I've got that I Bosch love. Bosch are amazing. Bosch are good. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Katie Beskow, 15 Minute Vegan. So just okay, super, I don't think I've seen super, that one. Yeah, super speedy. And um, I think one of her books that I've got is Five Ingredients. So it's like Ooh. five main ingredients. So you can just chuck it all in, job done. That's kind of like what I found was the most helpful. I think when I first came vegan, I tried to overcomplicate it and I think I was kind of you know trying to really change my food palette and like eat all of these new things which is amazing but then also you've got to keep it basic because it's just not sustainable otherwise if you're trying to like constantly make like three hour dinners and stuff you just need stuff that you're going to cook in about half an hour 20 minutes nourishing delicious you know yeah exactly don't reinvent the wheel if you yeah. if you've got your favorites just adapt them mm -hmm. um okay well we our question this week from one of our listeners was that they have pre-diabetes so i didn't really know much about this but it's it's kind of a a kind of a condition that you have before you develop type 2 diabetes okay no I didn't realize that. um so I guess it's like a warning sign. okay um and they wanted to know whether a plant-based diet can help I know I have read before that um a plant-based diet can reverse type 2 diabetes yeah I've seen that I think it's sort of focusing on whole food isn't it 
Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you can eat vegan chicken nuggets all day. No. Unfortunately, get rid of your diabetes. <laughs> Imagine. Uh, but, I mean, it's a horrible, horrible thing because you, you don't really think about it, do you? But my sister had gestational diabetes while she was pregnant. She's just had a, her baby recently. And, oh, my God, it was awful. Like, if she didn't get the levels right, she felt terrible. And Yeah, it's such a scary disease. I think so many people overlook it, but it's so you know, it's life changing and yeah. it, it's dangerous at the end of the day. Yeah, it really is. Well, luckily you haven't got Molly and I answering this, <laughs> but the plant-based health professional. So here's Shireen Kassam with her answer on that. Hi everyone. My name is Shireen Kassam, I'm founder and director of Plant-Based Health Professionals UK. Um, so the question was about pre-diabetes and can you reverse that on a plant-based diet? And the uh, answer is absolutely yes. I've had it from first-hand experience, um, my father was diagnosed with prediabetes back in September 2020. He was already vegan, actually, but when um, we now look back at what he was eating, it really wasn't a healthy um, vegan diet. Um, and also, um, he had had, back in 2004, what's called a Whipple's operation for pancreatic cancer, so part of his pancreas had been removed. So I was actually quite pessimistic as to whether he could truly reverse the type 2 diabetes. He was already vegan and he'd lost a third of his pancreas. So I thought it was pretty hopeless. But it just goes to show that things aren't hopeless. He sought out the right help with actually my colleague and plant-based health professional um, UK team member Rahini Bajekal, who helped him adopt a truly healthy vegan Indian diet, which was centered around fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts and seeds, and having a whole load of variety, some fruits and vegetables he's not eaten since his childhood, um, but going to lots of Indian shops and buying all these um, unusual Indian vegetables, um, and really minimising oil and ideally avoiding oil, um, and upping, um, you know, the, um, the, the healthy foods that we know prevent diabetes. And it's absolutely clear to me which these foods are. They are fruits, they are vegetables, Vegetables. They are whole grains rather than the refined grains. You know, we all get in the habit of eating white flour, white pasta. It needs to be the brown and whole grain versions and choosing our protein from plant sources. So, you know, having eggs or dairy or meat, that protein we know is inflammatory. It increases your risk of insulin resistance, it increases the deposition of fat around your body organs because it comes packaged with saturated fat. So just swapping out the, the animal protein for plant protein, that all brings down your insulin resistance. And the key to this is really to lose um, uh, about 5 to 10 percent of your body weight is what's normally required. And some people aren't even overweight, actually. You know, about 10% of pre-diabetics and diabetics um, aren't carrying too much weight. But what has happened is over the years of eating uh, a less than optimal diet, that fat has deposited around the organs, the liver, the muscle, the pancreas, and creates that same problem that you get when you're carrying too much um, weight under your skin. So that problem of insulin resistance, and to drive that fat out of the tissues and out of the um, uh, the cells, you need to focus on those foods that are full of fiber, micronutrients and low in saturated fat, but full of the um, healthy plant fats. So absolutely, yes, eating a healthy plant based diet is one of the most effective ways of um, reversing um, pre diabetes. Well, thank you so much, Shireen. That's amazing advice, as always. And um, if you want to know more about any health conditions, go over to the Plant-Based Health Professionals website. There's lots of information on there and recipes mm -hmm. as well, I think. So um, so that's good. Anyway, we will be back uh, next Tuesday. Yes. Um, we'll be back with our taste tests, discussing more Veganuary launches. Oh mm -hmm. my God, there's so much to talk about, isn't there? There's so many new things. Do you know what? I think coming back on Tuesday and I literally was like being hit by a vegan train. <laughs> what? honestly literally just the amount of stuff that has come out this month well this even just this week crazy i know i know and we've got to go and try it all we need to get down to <laughs> we wagamamas to. get the oh, fish and chips yes i'm going on sunday 
Are you? Yes, I am. Oh, awesome. Okay. Right. Well, I'd better hurry up. I know, I know. (laughs) But my table. I can't see any more Instagram posts. I got to go and eat it. (laughs) (laughs) Go and eat it. Uh, Well, on Thursday, I'll be chatting to Shireen Kassam, um, who is a member of the Plant Based Professionals, funnily enough, and Mm -hmm. uh, her sister Zara. They've got a new book out and they're going to be dispelling the myths about veganism, which is brilliant for Veganuary because. You need to arm yourself with all the information because there's going to be those naysayers going, oh, why are you doing that? Oh, Where'd support- you get your protein from? <laughs> yeah. Support British farmers and everything. And, um, you know, we're not against supporting British farmers, not at all, but we are against, you know, eating killing animals, animals, killing animals and, you know, killing the planet and, yeah. uh, you know, heart disease and all these other things that, that eating kind of processed meat and red meat causes. So... We, yeah, so we will see you then. In the meantime, don't forget to email us at simplyvegan at anthem.co.uk or leave a review on your platform of choice and subscribe. Yes. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>